why etiquette and politeness matter. Oh, the recording has started. We forgot to start the recording, but now we have started. For everyone viewing this on YouTube, you've missed nothing except for reviewing the rules of the online Zoom class. So welcome to the agenda. Um, etiquette on email and etiquette examples. Okay, I have a quick poll, but Emily, don't worry because we're just going to do this on the chat. So everyone, I would like for you to tell me, do you think politeness matters in English? Do you think politeness matters in English? Of course, 100%, yes, of course, yes, in all languages. Of course it matters, of course. Of course, yes, 100%. No, never, ha ha ha, so that person's joking. Sure, definitely, yes, 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 yes. Oh, come on, it's too easy. <laughs> I saw one no. Okay, chalas. We all know politeness matters. Someone says politeness is so necessary, and this is true. I think because English can be a casual language and can is considered a direct language that we can make the mistake that politeness does not matter in English. My first question for you all, what do etiquette and politeness mean? When I say politeness, what am I talking about? When I say etiquette, what am I talking about? Respect, good. Someone says no idea, that's fine. Etiquette is respect, consideration, good manners, being nice to people. It's a, a way of speaking, mm -hmm. behavior, to be nice, to be humble, to be respectful. Okay, listening to others, being polite, being diplomatic, I like that one. Mm -hmm. Knocking on the door. Okay, that's a great example of a polite behavior, knocking on the door. Oh, someone said happy Teacher's Day. Thank you. Respecting other people, caring about other people's feelings, following some rules. Mm -hmm, I like this. There is a system that we do follow when we talk about etiquette and politeness. Okay. I see people asking me to speak slowly. I'm sorry. This is an intermediate level class. I should say high intermediate. I'm speaking at a high intermediate speed. Okay. So. We have two definitions. Politeness is behavior that is respectful and considerate of other people. And we had that a lot in the chat, respect. Etiquette is the requirements of behaviors according to the conventions of society. So etiquette is something that is specific to each society, specific things that we consider appropriate related to our culture and our customs. They are related, they are not exactly the same, but today we will be talking about both of them. Question number two, why does politeness matter in a business environment? Why does politeness matter in a business environment? What can, uh, to make money, to help people? It's about formality, okay to attract customers, interesting, to have a good image, to have good connections, good. To not waste time on conflicts, to be more professional, to show respect, mm -hmm. business, business ethics, code of conduct for business, to have a professional workplace, to avoid anarchy, I like this one. This is true though, these systems we have in place, they are important to us, they maintain our sense of order. To get some money and to get customers, that's also very interesting. I wasn't sure if people would include that right away, but I completely agree. Okay, so politeness, I can't get my chat out of the way. Okay, politeness can affect how other people perceive you. Hold on a second, everyone. Something's wrong with my sharing. Sorry, please hold.
Okay, hold on, hold on. One second. Okay, we're gonna reshare. Thank you for your patience. Okay, we're back. Oh no, shoot, it doesn't work. Okay, it worked, it worked, it worked. Crisis averted. Can everyone see everything? Oh, I see in my, in my absence, an interesting discussion has been going on. Politeness can be viewed as weakness. Very interesting. Okay, so if you are per perceived as impolite, you can lose business opportunities. You can create tensions within your work environment. It can create misunderstandings, misinterpretations, and you can come across as arrogant and proud. And for the individual in the chat who mentioned that politeness can be viewed as weakness, I truly challenge this notion. I think we often believe that being polite somehow indicates that we are not strong or serious, that we will change our mind so that people like us. As in being polite is um, the same as being accommodating. Oh, I'm polite, so I let you do everything you want because I'm polite. It's actually not at all the same thing. You can be very strong, you can know what you want, and you can communicate that while being polite. And often, confusing the two can lead to impolite behavior, which can lead to misunderstandings and tension in the workplace. So it's a very commonly held, I consider, misconception to think that politeness is related to not standing up for yourself. I mean, you could also argue that some people claim they're being polite when they're not standing up for themselves. So I see that these can go in both directions, but they are absolutely distinct skills. Learning about politeness might feel annoying or cumbersome, but it's critical to your success in an Anglophone work environment. Tell me, what do you think this means, cumbersome? I gave you guys what we call a million dollar word, meaning it's a big, a very uh, high level vocabulary word. I see Emily jumping in. You can be polite and firm. Exactly, you can be polite and firm. <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumbersome, overwhelming, close. Cumbersome, a burden. Okay, like this. We call this when you don't know the meaning of a word. Um, but you're guessing, we call it context clues from the context. What do you think it would mean? Something not easily managed. I love that. Very good. Mm -hmm. Maybe complicated. Okay. All right. We'll move on since this is not a vocabulary lesson. However, ooh, someone said cumbersome means hefty. Yes, cumbersome means heavy. Something that is... Um, not easy to do, or quite literally something that's not easy to lift. We use it for objects as well. So I know that for some people, they consider learning about politeness to be hard and frustrating. And maybe in the back of their mind, they think, do I really need this? I'm already speaking in a second language. If I can communicate clearly, why do I need to be polite as well? So what I hope to convince you of today is that being polite is critical for your success in an English speaking or an Anglophone work environment. Question number three, what do you think of when you think of politeness? What kinds of behaviors? What do you think of when you think of politeness, of this course, kindness, manners? Okay. Talking quietly, smiling, mm -hmm. choosing your words, respecting others, lots of respect, being a good listener, polite. But what does it mean polite? Like what, when you hear polite, what do you think of? being respectful, respecting opinions, honesty, kindness, good manners, okay, being nice, mm -hmm. being professional, being tolerant, complimenting, interesting. Okay, so 
being polite in a business environment is more than just please and thank you. It's not just simply saying, yes, please, no, please, thank you very much. It's much more complicated than that. There's a lot of phrases or words that we add to our speaking and writing that we only use for politeness. We adjust our vocabulary and how we formulate our statements. How we actually phrase something is very different when we're trying to be polite. Also, politeness is different in different environments. For example, how you email your boss will not be the same as how you email your colleague. Both will be polite, but different. So before we get started, I had a little discussion time. Do you guys have any questions about being polite in English? Does anyone want to come on the mic and share your thoughts about what it means to be polite or if you think it's hard to be polite in English? If you want to join, raise your hand. Emily is going to nominate, let's just say three people to share. What questions do you have about being polite in English? And if no one has any questions, oh, okay, here's someone. First up is uh, Abdel Gwen. If you can hear us, Abdel. Abdel, are you there? You might have to turn off your microphone. Ooh, is Samira in the chat saying, could you and would you? Very good. We'll get to that in a second. I think Abdel does not know his microphone is muted. Okay, let's try Amina. But Abdel, if you're there, you're welcome to unmute your microphone too. But Amina, if you can hear us. Hi, Amina. Are you there? Is Dihar in the chat sending some great polite phrases? You guys are ready for this. Excuse me, could you? If, if Dr. Zaki is here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, thank you. Hi, Zaki. I mean, hello. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you very much for, to share us this uh, lessons, uh, and also I would like to thank Emily to give me the mic. So I was thinking, I was laughing, I said, the first thing to say is to thank the person who gave you the microphone, it's like in conference, and uh, one thing to be polite. And uh, the second thing I want to share with you all, uh, of course, and uh, the auditors, of course, uh, uh, my experience as a lawyer. So um, I found that when I go to the, to the court or to, to the tribunal, uh, to be polite and smile, uh, I could do many things. I mean, in the part of administration and being polite, I, reali I realized that it's very, very important and good thing to achieve what I wanted to achieve. That's all I want to say. And thank you again to give me the mic. Thank you, Zaki. I completely agree. I think uh, politeness really helps us in our business. It helps us when we need help from other people. Um, it helps us maintain a positive attitude and really it makes people like us more, whether they're our clients or our customers or our coworkers or our bosses. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, you hear me? Yeah, we hear you, Zaki, but yeah. I, I think yeah. we're, I, okay. I see Salma okay. here too. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to give. Hi, can you hear me? Hi, Salma. How are you? Hello, everyone. I'm fine. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, Tell thank us, you what questions do you have about politeness? Sorry, we're talking over each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I wanted to say that um, we have a limited, limited image about being polite in English. Uh, it's like when um, 
with saying thank you a lot or when uh, we op apologize when we say something wrong. Uh, I don't think that we have um, more than, more than uh, these uh, basic things that, uh, about being polite in English. And we, would, uh, and we would like to know more, Yanni, if you can tell us. Amazing. Thank you, Selma. I think that's exactly true. When people learn English, they learn just a few basics about politeness and they need, yeah. or perhaps you or many of you here need more tools, meaning more expressions, more vocabulary, a little bit of guidance about how to be polite. So I'm very happy you're here tonight as we'll be talking about all of this. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Selma. And let's do one more. I see Islam, are you there? Looks like you're on, you're on mute. I think you need to unmute your mic. Islam requested in the chat to please be called upon. Hello, guys. Okay, he's here. Hello, guys. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. That's Hi, Islam. Awesome. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Finally, I mean, I've been requesting to speak on this meeting like a few times and until today. So anyway. Amazing. Um, We're ha happy to have you here. Tell me, what do you think about politeness? Do you have any questions? Mm, yeah, like uh, I would like to know more expressions to use in the business environment, especially when asking, like, you know, Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we lost you. You said, especially when asking. Oh yeah, for example, in a business environment, you, uh, you do wanna be asking, not telling. So um, mm. I would like to know more expressions of, you know, using like, you know, sentences and stuff. Amazing. Yep, Islam, you touched on something really important, which is using questions. It's one of the main uh, key ways that we make our sentences more polite. So thank you so much. We'll definitely talk about that. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys, for jumping in. This was the first uh, discussion time that we have in today's presentation. But actually, today, we will have a lot of opportunities to join. So prepare yourselves. I saw some of you in the chat were a little nervous. There is no need to be nervous. Um, I hope to hear from many of you, and I'm really excited. So let's get through the next part, and then we can get to the fun interactions. So we're going to start here by talking about the keys to politeness in business English. And you guys in the chat and in the discussions we just had have mentioned many of them. There are five total. The first one is use modal verbs. This is a technical grammar term for what are four verbs. Would, could, might, and may. You can magically change a sentence or a question that is direct into an indirect and therefore polite one. Here's an example. Can we meet tomorrow? Okay, it's not terribly impolite, but it's direct. And it might feel awkward if someone says this to you in a business setting and maybe you're not free. It, it's a very direct way to ask this question. So let's replace it with a modal verb. Would tomorrow work for you to meet? Instantly, it feels more polite. It's less direct, it's softer, it's vaguer. These all sound like terrible things in a regular setting, but in a business setting, we want the indirect formulation for it to feel polite. 
All right, so I have a, not a test, an exercise for you guys. This is the same slide, but I have a new example. The example is, can you edit my cover letter? Write to me in the chat. How can we change this with a modal verb to sound more polite? So the example is, can you edit my cover letter? Tell me in the chat what we can say instead. Could you please edit my cover letter? Would you like to help me edit my cover letter? Could you help me? I like the, the introduction of the verb help is very nice. Would you mind editing my cover letter? Beautiful, that's very polite. Could you please, would you please? Mm -hmm. Could you offer me a service of editing? Would you please? Would you mind? Mm -hmm. May I ask you, would you please assist me? Mm -hmm. Very good. I saw someone said, do you mind? And I want to encourage you to say, would you mind? The modal verb would really, really softens the sentence and makes it more polite. Would you please? I would love if you, very good. I see some people saying, may you please help me? That's a little awkward. We would really stick with would or could. Do you have free time? Again, would you have free time? Go even more indirect. Or might, that would be a good sentence for might. Might you have some free time? Could you be humble and help this poor man? Well, that's a little intense actually, because now I feel bad for you, I feel obligated. What we're trying to do is reduce obligation by making it less direct and therefore easier to say no to. Here's what I have. Would you mind reviewing my cover letter when you have a free moment? So I loved that you guys also thought, would you mind, beautiful. I changed edit to review because edit is quite intense or it can be more intense as if someone has a red marker. Review is reading feedback. And I even added when you have a free moment just to reduce the pressure even more. Aha, Hisham says too long. Remember that, Hisham. We're going to talk about this at the end. Is shortness important when you're being polite? In fact, it's the opposite. But I don't want to ruin my own presentation. But you will notice these are not short phrases. We need redundancy. Honestly, Yazid, you're a little on the nose. It's quite redundant. Would you mind when you have a moment? Good. All right, we're gonna try number two. Use questions instead of statements when possible. Frame your sentences as questions. This makes you sound nicer and more considerate. And there's a grammar issue here, everyone. That should say framing your sentences as questions makes you sound nicer and more considerate, thoughtful and nice. Even if you need something done right away, even if it's urgent, Making it a question will make the other person more willing to help because it feels more polite. Here's an example. I need this report tomorrow. Whew. In an English speaking work environment, that's quite direct, it's quite severe. I would only expect this from a boss. And even then, it wouldn't be very polite. From a coworker, this would be extremely, extremely impolite. So here's an example of making it a question. Do you think you can finish it by tomorrow? It's also a little bit vaguer. I'm no longer saying I need. I've changed it to almost as, like a, as if we're talking hypothetically. Do you think it would be possible to possibly finish and complete? It might sound silly. It really, I understand for people learning English that this could sound silly and ridiculous and just get to the point. But when we hear, do you think you can finish it by tomorrow? We know that the meaning of the sentence, or sorry, of the question is, I need it tomorrow. So these are politeness formulas. Even if they sound completely indirect, the meaning is communicated clearly. 
The meaning is communicated clearly and politely. So now I know you want it tomorrow and I'm not mad at you. I'm not offended. If you tell me the first one, I know you need it tomorrow and I'm pretty offended because that was really rude. So maybe I won't work on it. I'll go instead, I'll talk to my other coworker about how rude you were. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope I wouldn't do that and create a toxic work environment, but just to show you that politeness can really change the effect of your communication and therefore your success in business. Here's our example. I'd like to join the meeting with you. Okay. How can we make this more polite? By making it a question. Just simply stating this is direct. It's a little too direct for the workplace. It makes, uh, it puts pressure on the person who hears this. How do we make this a question? Would you let me join the meeting? May I join the meeting? I beg your pardon. Is it convenient for you if I join? Okay, now we're not going so uh, distant as that, but simply making this a question, would it be possible to join the meeting? Beautiful. Is it possible for me to join? Beautiful. Do you mind me joining the meeting? Would you mind? Do you mind? Is it possible? May I join? Mm -hmm. Very good. I saw, can I join? Again, I would recommend a modal verb. Could or would it be okay? These little, little switches actually do change the level of politeness. Okay, very good. May I be your partner for the meeting? That's kind of a different request. I don't know if you're talking to your boss. I don't think that's appropriate because they'll say, no, I'm your boss. You're not my partner. I think it will be great if I join the meeting. Mm. Well, it's not a question. And it's actually, I think, even more pressure than I'd like to join the meeting. You're not advocating here. This is not a pitch. Here's why I would be great in the meeting. No, no, that's for your interview. In this moment, you're just expressing a desire to do something. And we're gonna think, how is, uh, what is the most polite way to express that desire? The answer. Well, the answer I said, many of the options are good. Would it be possible to join the meeting with you? Beautiful. Very good. Be careful, Yakub. Assist in English is not the same as in French. In English, assist means to help. To say uh, to join a meeting, we say attend. Attend a meeting. All right, beautiful. Okay, tip number three. Avoid the present simple. The present simple verb tense is assertive and direct. It can feel rude. Changing to a past tense or a progressive verb softens the statements and makes them more polite. I want the report. Okay. Um, I was thinking, <laughs> I, I was thinking I'd love to see the report. <laughs> Maybe that's a little too passive, but you see that changes it to progressive, it softens it. Here's an example. I'd like to finish this meeting by 4 p.m. Change to, I was hoping, I was hoping to finish this meeting by 4 p.m. Okay, we changed it to progressive. Now, we have a different one where we change to past tense. Can I ask a question about the agenda? I wanted to ask a question about the agenda. We use the past tense to actually express a desire in the current moment. It's a very interesting, polite formulation uh, when we use the past tense to actually express a current desire. And it does make the request quite polite. We usually only use this with feelings verbs. I wanted or I hoped, it's very common. I hoped, uh, I hoped to join the meeting. And it means I am currently hoping, but by making it past tense, we've made it polite. Here is our quiz, or sorry, exercise. Oh no. Oh, phew, okay. I hope you couldn't read that fast enough. So when do you want to talk about our project? Imagine this is a coworker comes up to you in the hallway and goes, when do you want to talk about our project? 
as in like, when are we having a meeting or when are we having a call? How do we make this more polite? You can either change to a past tense or to a progressive. And I have an example of both. I was hoping we could talk about our project. Nada, very good. Usama, exactly the same. Hmm. I was wondering when we could talk about our project. Good. I was wondering. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the project at your convenience. That's actually still quite direct. Let's is still quite direct as compared to using um, something about myself. I would like, I was wondering, I was thinking. When would you have a moment? Okay. I was asking when we talk about the project, that doesn't quite work. I was wondering, very good. I was thinking, I'm hoping, very good. I'm hoping to talk about the project. I wanted to ask about the project. Thank you, Murad. Perfect use of the past tense to express a current state. I wanted to talk about our project, okay? I wanted to know when we could talk about the project. Yasin, beautiful. Okay, when would it be possible? Okay, very good. So I have two examples. And where's Hisham to point out how long they are because they're very long. I was wondering when we should talk about the project. What would suit you? Okay, so this is a use of a progressive tense. I was wondering when we should talk about the project. What would suit you? It's extremely indirect, and therefore, it's more polite. Here's another example that is also extremely indirect and uses a past tense. I thought perhaps sometime next week may work to talk about the project. What do you think? This one might be slightly too indirect. <laughs> this is maybe if you're new at work and you're a little nervous. I thought perhaps sometime next week might work for the project. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, when we have so many different ways of making it indirect, it comes across as even more polite. All right, tip number four, use vague language or softeners. Actually, something I'll say about this past statement before we move on. I think we spend a lot of time worrying that will sound too polite or not firm or too accommodating. I'd like you to start worrying more about sounding impolite because the consequences of sounding impolite are much greater than sounding too polite. Your colleagues will learn about your work personality. They'll learn if you're firm over time. They don't need to learn if you're firm from the way you ask them questions. Your behavior will show that you're firm and that you're serious and you respect your deadlines and you won't complete their work for them. So I really would ask or recommend that you go to be, you go towards too polite than not polite enough. This is my recommendation. I see someone saying this is not necessarily true in Algeria, and I just want to remind you that this is business English. These are for English-speaking work environments. For those of you looking for multinational companies to work with foreigners, to work abroad, these are the cultural realities around politeness. All right, tip number four, using vague language or softeners. So you can soften a request. Okay, by using such words as a bit, around, kind of, a few, quite, slightly, a little. Okay, here's uh, an example. This estimate, or sorry, that estimate is high. Change to, that estimate is a bit high, don't you think? really, really softens and makes it more polite. You're still challenging the estimate. You're looking and you're saying, he's asking for this much, he's crazy. But what I say is, that estimate is a bit high, no? Okay, you're polite, yet firm. Here is our exercise. I think the marketing material is too complicated. 
soften this. It's a bit complicated. It's rather complicated, little bit complicated, slightly complicated. Ah, someone says adding isn't it at the end. We call this a tag question. Mm -hmm. That is very good. Pretty complicated, slightly complicated. Someone thinks softeners are kind of sarcasm. Well, if you're not using them sarcastically, they are not sarcastic. Tag questions are useful. It's a bit complicated, isn't it? All right, I think the marketing material is too complicated. Change to, I think the marketing material may be, I've used a modal verb, slightly complicated. Exactly. I saw someone asked earlier, how can you use ish? Often we use ish when we're talking about timing. So if I want to meet with someone, say, for lunch, I may say to them, let's meet around one-ish. It means around one o'clock. That's a very common usage of ish. Um, I also used around. I used two softeners, before and after. Um, can we have the meeting at 10-ish, maybe 10-15? It's good when you're starting the conversation around the time, and then ultimately you do confirm an exact time. But when you first propose the time, we add a softener. And then they can say one-ish, okay, that may work, but actually, what about closer to 1.30? Okay, so it's how we originally, or we first start talking about the timing. Okay. So Fian says, I don't know how to disagree politely or to say no politely. We're getting to that and I'm very happy you brought that up. All right, our last tip is using negative questions. Using negative questions softens the language and changes strong language into indirect language. This is actually very strongly advised for more formal situations. You can use this in less formal, but in more formal situations, it's very common. So an example is, yes, we've met before. I met you at the conference last year. Change to, haven't we met before? I think it was at the conference last year. We've actually softened it twice or softened, made it indirect. The first is that we changed it to a negative question. Haven't we met before? It introduces uncertainty. It allows the other person to think and pause. Uh, the second way that we've softened this is by saying, I think, I think it was at the conference last year. This person knows, she knows it was at the conference, but it is more polite to use, I think, Perhaps it gives the other person space in case they don't remember. They can say, oh, really? Hmm. Instead of having to say, uh, no, I don't know. I, I don't remember, okay? It makes it less specific and therefore more polite. You must consider how the client might respond. How do we add a negative question? You must consider how the client might respond. Apparently there's a way to say ish in Arabic. Oh, I should read the chat. Sorry, everyone. Won't you consider, shouldn't you consider? Okay, mustn't you consider? Ooh, that sounds a little too formal, I think, for my American ears, mustn't. Shouldn't you, shouldn't we, should we consider? Mm -hmm, I like this, or I'm sorry, shouldn't we consider? We're using our negative question. Wouldn't you, mm -hmm, don't you think? Okay, very good, let's see it. Shouldn't we consider how the client might respond? So I'm very impressed that you guys also thought not only to have a negative question, but also to say we. It is more inclusive and it is less uh, direct. You must consider becomes, shouldn't we consider, okay? And again, it's less direct in the language, 
so it feels polite. But the meaning is the same. When you say, shouldn't we consider how the client might respond? I know that you mean you should consider. <laughs> In an English speaking work environment, we use certain formulas for politeness. The meaning is just as strong, even if the language is indirect. And I was reading from my team that there's a way to say ish in Arabic. It's hawali takriba. Something like this. <laughs> or maybe that just says that's how we say ish. Anyways, I'm getting, a, I'm getting a notes from my team. So I guess this exists also in Arabic. Okay, so this actually, I was happy that someone pointed out that this, um, that this, when we make the sentences more polite, they get really long. Oh my gosh, they get long. I'm just trying to ask the guy if we can meet tomorrow. And now I have to talk, you know, I have to add all these would you and do you and is it possible and everything. I completely understand. I relate, it's longer, it's harder, but it actually does make a very big difference. And you don't necessarily get any brownie points for being short if you are being impolite. It is always more important to be polite than to say something quickly, unless something is on fire. <laughs> if the building is on fire, you can say, the building's on fire. But in a normal works, uh, work environment, even when you're facing a deadline and you have pressure, politeness is critical. So English, I say, is known as the language of efficiency, but it's known as this because we don't use a lot of adjectives. We don't use a lot of adjectives or adverbs to describe things, which is very different from languages like French. So it is true that in some ways we're efficient and we get to the point. But in a business scenario, the opposite can be true. Longer phrases, softened phrases, additional words, making things questions, indirect, um, that is the norm and that is expected, okay? So I wanna prepare you all to be received by your English speaking colleagues um, with kindness and warmth because you've been polite to them. All right, so before we move on, I'm gonna take a quick pause. I'll look at the Q&A, see if there's any questions in there. We're about to move into our interactive part of the night. I'm very excited. Okay, how do we set up a boundary so that people will make the difference between politeness and naive? Well, I mean, I think this question is interesting because I think it has a lot of cultural information within. Um, the fear of sounding naive is not so common in English work environments. It's not something that is commonly mentioned or discussed when it comes to politeness. It's true that younger employees or employees further down, you know, the boss is here and they're maybe five rows down, are perhaps more polite, but it never comes across as naive. If anything, it's charming. When people are too polite, it can be very charming. The opposite is never true. When someone is impolite, there's no positive side to it. So again, I would worry less about sounding naive and more about sounding polite. And there's a difference. There's really a difference between being polite and not uh, speaking up for yourself. Being polite does not mean um, accepting to stay late at work while everyone goes home. It doesn't mean saying yes to everything. It's really about how you phrase your sentences. In that ways, it's like a, a formula, formulaic tip. It's not about your behavior. It's just about how you phrase what you already want. So if you're worried about being naive or taken advantage of, I think that that question is not related to the question of politeness or not as much as it might sound. Okay, another question. In which situations is it extra important to be polite? Hmm, good. 
I think it is extra important to be polite when you are in a job interview or you otherwise want something from someone. Um, perhaps you meet someone, perhaps you're at a company event um, and you meet someone who works for a department that you hope to move to. Well, I would be very polite to that person. <laughs> it's, I mean, this is just strategic. Um, you can say it's also important to be polite if you ever meet anyone who is, um, perhaps it's important to be formal and polite with. So um, a diplomat, perhaps if you meet Emily out and about, or um, someone from the government. But really I'd like to emphasize that politeness should carry for everybody. I think as um, Dr. Zaki shared, being polite to perhaps the person who runs the tribunal may have just as many, if not more benefits than being nice only to the big boss. Politeness is really for everyone. All right, I'm gonna keep going here so that we don't run out of time and I'll come back to the Q&A soon. So we are going to do examples of polite expressions plus scenarios. This is the part I'm really excited for. So get thinking and get prepared for participating on microphone. So the first one is pointing out a mistake. Ooh, very sensitive. How do we point out a mistake? Either to a coworker, which is hard, to a boss, this is really hard, um, but also it can be hard to your employee if you are the boss and you need to point out a mistake. Essentially, it's always hard to point out a mistake. How do we do this politely? Well, here are five different ways to formulate this remark. It looks like, <laughs> it seems, it seems there is an error, not there's an error. It seems, it seems there's a page missing. Well, if I'm looking and I have page one and page three, obviously there's a page missing. But a polite way to say this is, it seems, okay? Or didn't we agree on, or didn't we decide? That's formulate, formulating with a negative question. Say someone gets me a report or sends, maybe not me, someone sends their boss a report a day late and the boss wants to have a conversation about it. They can approach them and say, uh, didn't we agree on Tuesday for the report? It gives the person a chance to respond. We did. I'm really sorry. I couldn't get it. Okay. Okay. Well, next time, please send me an email before we miss the deadline. Okay. This is how you point out a mistake in a polite way. I thought we had agreed on, or I thought we had agreed to. And I seem to remember that we... That's also often about deadlines, when people have um, missed a deadline or um, done something incorrect, like emailed the client when we said the other person would email the client. All right, so let's see if this works. Okay, here's our first scenario. Your boss sent the wrong date in an email. Imagine the conference or the meeting with clients is on Wednesday. And in his email to the clients, he said, see you Thursday. What do you say? Abdanur, if you say, boss, you are wrong. <laughs> you are in big trouble. That is not polite. All right, but guys, this is for people to join and to speak. I want you to come on audio, raise your hand, and pretend you're in the scenario. In this scenario, I will be the boss, and you will tell me you will point out to me the mistake. I will give you feedback and Emily may jump in and give you feedback about how you handled the scenario. Who wants to jump in? Raise your hand. Hi, Nora Dean. I think you have to turn, turn off your, or turn on your microphone. Hi, everyone. Hello, welcome. Thanks for volunteering welcome, to go first. <laughs> Good. All right, Norazine, I'm, I'm your boss and I just sent, oh, are you there? 
my answer my answer is I will pass uh, I will pass it uh, I will say okay there is no problem yeah we can uh, fix uh, the problem outside. Okay, very interesting. So you would choose to avoid altogether. You would not point out the mistake. Yes, yes, yes. I will pass it, pass it uh, without problem. Okay, well, uh, I want someone to join us who's gonna point out the mistake. So we'll let one more person join. Nuruddin, you're correct in that there's a strategy involved with yes. when we point out mistakes. That is totally true. In this scenario, imagine that you have to point out the mistake. All right, we have Mimi here, who's going to give us um, a possible way to point out this mistake. Thank you, Nora Dean. Howdy. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Western greeting. <laughs> I know, I appreciate it. Howdy back. <laughs> so okay, tell us, thanks. Mimi, Imagine I'm the boss, I've made this mistake, you have to tell me it's a mistake because the meeting is a huge deal. What do you do? So I would say, would you please, boss, uh, correct your email? Okay, all right, very interesting. So I will say two things. I'll say one thing I liked about it and one thing to consider. So one thing I liked about it is the use of the modal verb would and that you made this a question, okay? One thing to consider is it's quite direct to ask the boss to directly correct. You might say to him or her, would you review your email to make sure the date is correct? Or we okay? can say, and, or, uh, excuse me, or we can say, would you please check your email back? Absolutely. Would you please check your email to back, confirm back. the date? Mm -hmm. Yes. So you, so you let the boss locate the mistake, him or herself. Okay, I like this. It's very polite. It shows that you're checking on them. Very good. Thank you, Mimi. Thank you, Ariella. All right, everyone, great. I know this is a hard one because perhaps there's many scenarios when we don't wanna correct our boss. So maybe I'm touching on a few things here, politeness and culture. There are some environments where correcting the boss is absolutely never an option. So we're imagining this was kind of a company where that was a possibility, the boss was open to it, et cetera. Mm, someone asked, should we write an email back or speak with the boss face to face? That's a really good question. Since this mistake was done via email, I think it's okay to respond with another email in the same chain because then they can directly look down. So not a new email, but in the same chain, you go just to the boss, you say, didn't we decide on Wednesday? Maybe it's my mistake, something like this. You always have the option to say it in person. When we point out someone's mistake as a general rule, we try to keep it short. Did we say Wednesday? Do you, um, I think they're very heavy. We just quickly. We're going to person for each. I actually have a lot of scenarios. <laughs> if we have time, we'll go back. So now we're talking about requests. This is when we want something. We can say, could or can you? Would you mind? As we said before, can can be very um, can be very direct. I would save that for um, informal, and that or not informal, but um, you know, a little bit less formal with coworkers or people. In, in your department. For big requests and favors, um, I was hoping you could, I was wondering if you could, would it be okay if, that's a very common one, do you think you might be able to, okay, so as I said, these ones, could, can you, or would you mind, are considered direct. I know it doesn't sound direct to say, would you mind, 
but believe me, it's actually direct. Would you mind um, finishing this report for me? Excuse me, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a huge request. I need you to be very polite and explain it to me. They're not appropriate for big requests like finishing a report. However, something small, um, would you mind passing me that piece of paper? Oh, thank you. That's exactly appropriate. Okay, so here's our next scenario. You want to ask a coworker to sit at the reception desk and take phone calls for you while you run an errand. So this person is clearly a secretary or a receptionist. He or she sits at the desk and answers the phone. So imagine he has to go to the pharmacy for 10, 15 minutes. He needs to ask his coworker, hey, and I won't give it away, but he has to ask them if they will uh, sit at the desk while he's gone. So raise hands, who wants to come on? And imagine you are this person. And I don't want, I did like the alternate uh, response to the last one, it was very interesting. But for the sake of the game, this is the task you are obliged to do. I don't want a different strategy of, uh, you run out and you run back and you never ask anyone. Okay, halas, maybe you have cool strategies, but in this scenario, I want you to tell me how you ask, how you would ask a request. One person, one lucky person, please, Emily. Who am I making scared to talk to their boss? <laughs> It's not scary, but it should be polite. Okay, Nawal, Nawal, welcome. I think you need to put your microphone on. Hi, Nawal, are you there? All right, I see Kareem is here. Kareem, come join me. Tell me what you would say to your coworker. We have a lot, I think we're having some microphone challenges tonight. <laughs> I see Najee is, is bribing his coworker. I have something for you if you just sit and replace me for 15 minutes. I wouldn't call this politeness, I would call this a bribe. It's a strategy, uh, but it's not necessarily a request. I think that's a transaction. All right, Islam, welcome. Is anybody out there? Oh. Hi, Islam. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. For me, I choose. I uh, was helping. Are you here? No. Oh. We've lost them. Saida, I like yours. Would it be okay if you replaced me for, for 15 minutes? I was hoping, Ahlam, very good. Oh, we have Soad. Hi, Soad. Hello. Ah, good evening. On. Yeah. Good evening, welcome. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. I'm excited Good. to hear I'm, you ask me to I'm excited reception. too. <laughs> Actually, I just wanted to pinpoint to uh, something. Is that in Algeria, we are too direct. I don't know if you agree with me or not. Okay, and, interesting. Um, yeah, we are too direct. I mean, we don't have expressions in our L1, in our native mother tongue, like mm -hmm. correct me if 
if I'm wrong or um, would you, mm -hmm. could you. Mm -hmm. We do have them in classical Arabic, but not in our di uh, dialect. This is why maybe we are okay. not the best when it comes to tourism and uh, commerce. <laughs> um, Interesting. This is just a humble opinion. I don't know if you agree with me or not. And uh, concerning the scenario, I would try. Um, Please, go ahead. Yeah. I, I would say, um, I was wondering if you could sit at the reception desk and take um, phone calls. Uh, I have something urgent. I don't want to bother you, but uh, I'll be as quick as possible. <laughs> I don't know if I'm Go right. Yeah. Very good. I thought it was great that you made it nice and long. Yeah. Would you mind, you were clear about the request. You said, I hope you don't mind. You said it was something urgent. I actually don't have any uh, points to consider. That's exactly how I would make that request. Yes, and uh, uh, I don't know if you allow me to add one more thing. Sometimes when we receive okay. emails from the, the head of the department, we sometimes correct him. Uh, not necessarily using a very sophisticated soft smooth language we just say um, uh, please check again the date uh, or confirm or reconfirm the date if you don't mind and generally he responds right away saying thank you to that person um, okay. uh, who, who uh, pointed to the problem first this okay. is all thank you very yes. much indeed thank you Thank, thanks, thanks, Suad. Um, yeah, no, there's a lot of cultural points that you're making, and I think that that's something really important. Is that we are learning another language, we are always learning about other cultures and the linguistic culture of the language. So I noticed this in in my my coworkers from other cultures and backgrounds, many other backgrounds that when someone says the wrong date and they email or if i send the wrong date and they email they say can you please check and confirm okay it's okay i understand especially if they're from another culture i understand but truly in english business environments a more polite email is expected oops are you sure you meant wednesday and not are you sure you meant thursday and not wednesday so there's there really is a culture around it. What is acceptable in Algeria will be different than what is accepted in England, which will also, to a small degree, be different than what is acceptable or considered polite in America. So everything I'm sharing with you, it might not be true for your current work environment in Algeria, but it might be true if you move into a work environment with native English speakers or that is operating mostly in English. Awesome. Ariel, Thanks, so and yeah uh, just please one final question if you don't mind I hope I'm not taking this is being polite I hope I'm not we, taking from the time of others just one final question please is is politeness okay. related to register you mean the register of your voice no no, it's, it's, you know, register, is, is it the same like when you talk to a coworker, to a boss, to a, a relative, to yes. a president? Thank you, Suad. I, yeah. I appreciate that. The short answer is no, and we don't have time for the long answer, but it's not the Thank same. Thank you. I'll try to get to it at the end if I have time. Thank you so much. Okay. Next scenario. Asking permission, although I think we kind of just did this one and we only have 15 minutes, so I'm going to go to one that's a little more different. Let's do making suggestions. When we are making a suggestion to someone, especially, um, I would say when we're new in our career or even if we're new at a job and we're really excited, sometimes we want to rush directly into the suggestion. Hey, I, you know, I think we should do this or, oh, we should, we should and you come rushing into the suggestion. That's actually not the most polite way to make the suggestion. It can feel like you're putting pressure on someone. They can feel perhaps you don't know the background. They have to answer you right away. It becomes a long conversation. 
So here are some polite ways to make suggestions. You may want to consider. Okay, it's indirect. It gives them a great opportunity to say, oh, we have considered that and we're not interested. Or they can just say, thank you. If I say to someone, you should have an event, they can't say thank you. They have to engage. So it doesn't give them uh, what we call an out. But if I say to someone, you may want to consider an event next week. If they're not interested, they have an out, meaning a way to end the conversation. They can say to me, thank you, I'll consider it. And sometimes we have a joke that when someone says, I'll consider it, they're really saying no. <laughs> but it's polite. So here's a scenario. You want to suggest to your boss that you change the design of the report. The design is not a mistake. The report is not bad. But maybe you want to add a logo and you think, gosh, it'd look really good if we added a logo. And you think the boss is open. The boss may really like this idea. How do you suggest it to your boss? Raise your hand. Rashida, welcome. Yes, hello everybody. Hi Rashida. Hello, C can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah, good. So we go directly to the scenario. Um, good. Yeah, so I, I will say, um, hello sir. I've been working on the report for a couple of days and I ended up by, um, by uh, yeah, by changing a bit the design of the report. So, um, uh, if we uh, if we add, you know, I don't know. The, so uh, I will select. What about if we if we change the design of the report uh, as I did it in in these two days? What do you think? Awesome. All right, amazing, Rashida. Okay, I loved that it was long. You know I love a long request, <laughs> I mean, or a long suggestion. Um, I think, and some bosses, I should say some bosses will get frustrated with politeness and they may say to you like, get to the point. But in the beginning, when you're with a new boss, I always start long or I start more polite. Um, I think it was great. I think you had uh, slightly changed the scenario that you had already made the change, which is very <laughs> courageous. And in that scenario, you politely said, um, I made a change, you know, I was wondering, you gave background, I've been working on it for a while, and here's a suggested change, and what do you think? I think um, that's what I would suggest that you add at the end, is what do you think? Instead of, is it a yes or a no, or would you consider this? If you have the change you're presenting to him or her saying, what do you think? Or, or here's a proposal. It makes it very clear that they can say yes or no. And you realize that you're not saying it's finished. <laughs> is it, you know, is it okay? Or is it, it's just, it's an option. Yeah. Oh, oh, what uh, Miss, what do you think of the, uh, of the introduction before uh, asking for, uh, for, uh, for, for the opinion of the boss. I mean, the, the short introduction of, uh, of uh, I've been working on the, on the design of the report. I liked that. I liked that. You set up the context for the conversation. Of course, it's context specific. So you can imagine if you already are having a conversation, you could go straight to it. But with your scenario, Rashida, I pictured you knocking on his or her door and saying, excuse me, and then the introduction is important to orient them around your suggestion. That's very smart. I thought it was great. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Rashida. Great job. Oh, we have 10 minutes. What do I want to do? Disagreeing. Ooh, disagreeing is hard. Saying no, declining a suggestion. Okay, there's three. Everyone, tell me in the chat, would you rather do disagreeing, saying no, or declining a suggestion, disagreeing, saying no, or declining a suggestion. Well, this is easy. Everyone says saying no. <laughs> oh, someone said declining, declining. Can't we do them all? I want to do them all also, but we have 10 minutes. All right, let's try. 
We'll start with the most popular saying no. This is a hard one. How do we say no to people? Here are some expressions. And the joy, the beauty of expressions is that you can memorize them. You do not need to get creative. This is how we say it. We essentially, as English speakers, have these phrases in our heads. Ooh, that sounds great, but mm, that sounds great, but I can't. Or I'm sorry, I really can't. I have to. I really appreciate the invite. That one's more specific. You've been invited to something. I have a second thing here. Okay, in English, we don't typically decline an invitation without giving a reason. The reason does not have to be true, either real or made up, but it's quite rude to decline and not give a reason. It's, it's hard to be polite without giving a reason. The most common made up or not true reason is I'm tired. It's very common. Oh, I'd love to, I'm just so tired. Maybe you're tired, maybe you're not tired, but it's a little awkward to say, I'd love to, but no. <laughs> No, it comes across as way too direct and very impolite, okay? So you have to come up with something. I'm tired or I can't tonight, I'm, I'm calling my family or, ooh, I wish I could, but I have something else planned, okay? Here's our scenario. You want to decline an invitation to join an after work dinner with colleagues. An after work dinner with colleagues. Mm, someone says, I have work to do. This is another common one. Oh, I wish I could. I have, I have work to do tonight. Ah, Abdul Latif says, lying is impolite. Well, this is a tricky one because in English, sometimes we expect what we call a white lie. A white lie is considered a small and harmless lie. Something like saying, I'm tired so that you're polite, you say no politely, but the lie doesn't hurt very many people. If you are very concerned about this and you say, I'm not someone who lies, not even a white lie, not even a small lie, then you're gonna have to find other ways to say no and be very honest. For example, I can't, I actually, I really just wanna lie in bed and watch movies tonight, okay. You can be honest, be prepared for questions, and you're revealing more about your personal life. That's fine. But you do typically give a reason. So when we give these white lies, it's usually to protect our privacy. I don't wanna be someone motivating you to lie. You can be honest and very open, but in the workplace, sometimes we say these small lies so that we aren't telling everybody all the details of our life. Okay. All right, who's coming up? Raise your hand. And we don't have a lot of time, so let's try to be super fast. Rami, welcome. Rami, I think you're muted. All right, we might need someone else. Abdinoor, are you raising your hand with me in front of the screen like this? <laughs> Hello. Hi, Nada. Welcome. Hi, thank you. All right, okay. let's hear your scenario. Yes. Uh, I would say, I would say, uh, I would be happy to be present, but uh, unfortunately, I have uh, some other plans to do tonight. Perfect. That was great. Okay. And I think something that can even you can even add to the end if you want to make it even nicer way of saying no is saying, but I hope you have a great time. Yes. And this is a great way to move the conversation past the no. I can't. I have other plans tonight. I hope you have a great time. It shows also mm, the conversation's finished. I'm even not going to tell I, you my plans. Even if I said in the first place that... Uh, uh, it would be happy to be there present uh, with you. Yeah, I think um, mine is an additional suggestion, but you don't have to use it. Your answer was great. Okay, it was perfect. You. you didn't give a lot of detail, which is perfectly fine. 
Some of us have those nosy coworkers though, who they keep asking, are you sure? Why not? Why not? So that's my <laughs> advice to sort of close the conversation. Like sometimes you close the conversation by saying, where are you going tonight? Like I said, no, that conversation's over. <laughs> so anyways, Nada, thank you so much. Great thank job. You. Nice to talk to you. Awesome. Oh, thank you. You too. All right. We have declining a suggestion and disagreeing. Let's do declining a suggestion. So when we are at work and somebody says, hey, I think we should, um, I don't know, turn in, you know, two mini reports instead of one big report. Or I think we should change our social media design. Or I think, et cetera. How do we decline the suggestion politely? Again, these are always very sensitive when we're talking about saying no or rejecting something someone has proposed without sounding impolite or rude. So some options are, I'm not sure that would work, or that might not be the best solution. I don't know if that would work. Again, we're, we're softening. Maybe in my head, I think, no way. I know that won't work. But what I say is, I don't know if that'll work. Um, another one that I like is that might be a little ambitious. And we use that when someone makes a really big suggestion, like let's redo entirely the whole office and move all the chairs and da da. Instead of having to address each point, we can just say, that's, I think, a little ambitious right now. I think let's consider that in a few weeks. It's a way to decline it. Okay. Scenario. You don't agree with your coworker's suggestion to change the colors of your logo. Who wants to join? I always do this, but actually I think the hand is doing this. <laughs> this emoji. Who's joining me? Decline the suggestion of your coworkers. Hello, Tariq, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, thanks, Emily, too, and everybody who's watching us uh, this uh, evening. All right, are you ready to jump into the scenario? Actually, I wanted to talk about the previous scenarios, but uh, I'm not really prepared for, that, for this one, but I can try. Jump on in, try it, see what comes up. You can use what's, um, what's on the screen for, for help. Imagine... It's the ACCA and someone says, I want to change our logo to green for, mm, I don't know, for good luck or something like this. And you think, what, to green for the US Embassy? What would you say? I don't know, to be honest, because I, I didn't really think about it, but I might say something like, I really like it uh, this way, but I think the previous one is, is better or might work better. Mm. Beautiful, I love this. So you started with um, acknowledgement, perhaps a compliment of what they said. Oh, I like your suggestion or I like that. And then I think the previous way might work better. It's great. You know why it's great? Because it's vague. We use the modal verb might. And it doesn't come across as too um, rude or specific about what's negative. It's just expressing that you decline the suggestion. That's all that you need to do. You don't, you don't need to go into detail giving them feedback. You're just simply saying, I'm not sure that will work. But thanks for the suggestion. <laughs> thanks, Ariana. All right. Thank you, Tariq. Thank you. OK. All right, guys, we're finished in two minutes, man. I wanted to open this up to discussions, but I just don't think we'll have time. Um, instead, I will do some Q, Q and A's, what's left there. Even though it's so sad, I have discussion time open. How about I'll leave the screen up on the one we didn't do in case someone wants to write this down, the one about disagreeing. All right, let's do some questions. Is there any differences when you talk to your boss on WhatsApp? I mean, can you be informal and more relaxed than usual, says Mohammed Lamine. Yes, I think you can be more informal 
but I would certainly not be completely informal. It's still your boss. Um, it's true that WhatsApp is a very efficient communication. So it's really about getting messages across quickly. So for that reason, we're usually more direct. But I would be careful, especially around making suggestions, declining suggestions, or providing feedback. Even on WhatsApp, you need to be polite and slightly formal. Um, it's just sometimes even harder because it's over text. Okay. Amina asks, hello, you've mentioned previously that politeness is important in an Anglophone environment. My question is why precisely Anglophone? Well, Amina, today we're talking about business English. So really we're examining the business English environments. Politeness is critical in business English. I'm not saying it's not critical in other environments, but we are highlighting today that in an English speaking environment, politeness matters and it is noticeable when someone is impolite. Good. Hiba asks, wouldn't it be more appropriate to agree with their suggestion, but reflect upon a better one? It sounds like a good idea, but what if we try something else? I agree with that. And I think that's actually what Tariq said. He complimented the suggestion and said, but I don't think that will work. I suppose he didn't provide a counter suggestion, um, as you mentioned, but Hiba, that's a really good idea in a scenario where you're, um, maybe brainstorming. So someone suggests something and you say, mm, I like that, but I like this one more. And you can keep different ideas coming. I think that's a great idea. Brahim asks, how to keep polite with unpolite bosses? Is it worth it? Oh, Brahim, I'm so sorry to hear you have an unpolite boss. It's a really hard scenario to be in. It's hard to handle when your boss is not polite with you. I would ask you to consider, is there an advantage to you also being unpolite? Sadly, unfortunately, no. It's a horrible situation where the boss has the power and they're maybe abusing that power by not being polite with you, but it won't get you any advantages to be unpolite back. I would look for a new job. All right, guys, I think we're coming up on our hour past our hour. I'm so happy to see you guys. I'm happy to hear from you. Every time I plan so much, we only get through a little bit, but this was just lovely. Next, oh, next time, write in professional emails. Do not miss it. And also try to stay tuned for some sort of poll, maybe from the U.S. Embassy, I want to say Instagram, about what our final topic should be. Thank you for coming, everyone. I love seeing you all every Tuesday night. It's a highlight of my week. And see you next time.